Hey everyone, I'm sitting in Central Park walking with Sasha. There's Sasha. Sasha, say hi. There you go. I uh, just got back from giving her shots at Petco and thought I'd go through the park and thought I would do a quick Facebook Live. Uh, since I wanted to start showing you guys New York and wonderful little places around the city, this really is an amazing park. Um, today I wanted to talk about the Trump campaign pushing the theory that Hillary has a secret illness she hasn't told anybody about. Now, what's going on, it's been actually kind of amazing, but I, but I know why they're doing it. Basically, a couple days ago you had Katrina Pearson, who you may recall, the Trump spokeswoman who gets everything wrong. She's the one who said that Obama invaded Afghanistan in 2001, um, that Obama and Hillary were responsible for killing Mr. Khan's son in Iraq in 2004. And I'm forgetting what she got wrong the other day. There was another really good little whopper from Katrina. But Katrina suggested the other day that Hillary has dysphagia, you know, some kind of secret brain illness. The next day, we hear from Trump himself talking about how Hillary has, uh, um, she doesn't have the stamina to be president. She's taking so many naps and she goes to bed early. He wrote yesterday on Twitter something about her going to bed early. Oh, and she takes so many vacations. Uh, what's going on there is it's clearly a sexist attack on her that she's a woman who can't handle the stress of the job, but it's also pushing this larger theme that she has a secret illness. Um, the final one that really just called it right out <laughs> was uh, Rudy Giuliani yesterday, who's, who's yeah, now Sasha's going after squirrels. Um, Sash, uh, uh, squirrel hunting here. Rudy Giuliani yesterday suggested that, um, he suggested right out that Hillary had a secret illness she wasn't telling people about. Now, what's going on is there's been an internet uh, conspiracy thing that the Republicans started, at least I saw it a week ago, I'm sure it's been around longer, that claimed uh, to have uh, secret copies of Hillary's uh, health records, and it was a brain scam and all sorts of things. Well, they were fake. They put them on Twitter, the account got deleted, then they put them back on Twitter. Um, what I think we're seeing is something that we'd all worried about from the beginning was that Trump really wouldn't have any scruples in view of everything he's said about everything, you know, attacking people with disabilities, attacking women, um, you know, making nasty comments about Megyn Kelly's period. I mean, just sort of disgusting comments that he would be willing to go places that no other Republican candidate would be willing to go. Now, I think we miscalculated in one way in that we thought Trump was only going to go there in terms of, you know, the old Republican scandals of the 1990s. And Trump himself did. He made a comment about how we still don't know if Hillary killed Vince Foster. You know, crazy stuff. For, for any of you too young to remember, that was a, one of the crazy Republican scandals of the 1990s about Hillary that ended up being untrue, like all the rest of them. Um, so Trump has already made it clear he's willing to go there with the, with the current scandals we have. What I think we may not have anticipated was that he was willing to go there with totally new made up stuff such as this idea of her being ill. Um, the second thing that I think this shows is Trump really is desperate. Um, you know, the polls have been showing us that Hillary's ahead, whether it's from four points to 10 points, depending on the poll, she's clearly doing well nationally and she's doing even better state by state, which are the real polls you have to look at. As all of you know, here in the States at least, we don't have a national election. We don't have, you know, if you get 51 million votes versus 50 million votes, you win. It's based state by state. And state by state, Hillary's doing much better. Now, we're three months out. Can that change? Yes. Has it changed historically? Yes, it has, even though Hillary has a clear advantage. What happens, though, when one guy is losing badly is they tend to go very negative to the extreme. Um, they go negative because negative campaigning works. It kind of backfires, too, in that it's, it's a bit of a pox on both your houses, that it can hurt Hillary, but it can hurt Trump, too. But I think, you know, Trump is willing to go so wacky here um, and trying to goad Hillary into, I don't know, whether it's trying to get her to say something stupid or get the media to finally believe his crazy theories, that it still poses a bit of a wild card because it's something that you wouldn't expect any other sane candidate to do. Um, so that's the only reason I'm bringing it up is I think it's not just a matter of ignore it. And I think to a degree, Hillary is very right to ignore it. I think it's something we've got to keep an eye on because it's a sign of the new Trump and the fact that he's willing to go anywhere to win this race, including lying. You know, the question, oh, we know he lies, but I mean, <laughs> sort of taking lying to a new level, I mean. Uh, you know, the final question before I close will be, it, what will be interesting to see is to what degree does the media sort of take this on. Now, what's been very interesting 
is the degree to which, especially in the last week or two, we've seen the media just not willing to accept the lies from the Trump campaign. You know, you had that wonderful clip earlier this week of, um, I think it was Brianna from CNN talking to Trump's lawyer, Michael Cohen, when she said, you know, you know, you got, the campaign's had a really bad couple of weeks. And he says, you know, says who? She says, the polls, everybody? Says who? The polls, I told you. Which polls? All of them. <laughs> that wasn't just, that was pretty That was pretty impressive on its face, but she wasn't the only one to really start to call the, the Trump people, I think, on their lies. You are seeing much more pushback. Actually, there was a wonderful uh, Joy Reid yesterday morning, too, on MSNBC with a pastor who was just lying and going on with some long filibuster, and Joy just shut him down and said, I'm just not going to let you come on my show and lie. Um, you know, Brian Stelter at CNN also has been really good, I think, at, at calling folks on this. I've got a few questions here, or maybe not questions. Uh, you're exactly right. James says Trump is desperate, has no scruples and no grasp of the truth. Uh, Philip says, crap, I just worked it out. Hillary's the person who planted Obama's fake birth certificate. He's kidding. I know Philip. So that she can get him elected president. Yeah, yeah except we know Philip. He's joking. Um, in any case, so I, I just think it's something we have to be careful of. You know, I'm going to, um, in the next day or so, I'm going to be doing a major fundraiser for my work over the next three months working on the campaign. And one of the, th working not for the campaign, I mean working on the issue of the campaign, working on my own, trying to make sure Trump doesn't win and that we elect progressives to Congress. And one of the main themes I'm going to keep harping on is it is great Hillary is doing this well, but things have turned before. You know, we, we've lost when we were doing well before. Gore was not supposed to lose to Bush in 2000. Um, Kerry, I want to say, even was doing decently after the convention. And then obviously we know what happened with Kerry versus Bush in 2004. So it, it's something we've all got to be careful with, keep vigilant with. And finally, don't forget the Congress. If we can really, really destroy Trump, we can also really destroy the Republicans' chances on hanging on to the Congress. And I think both are vitally important. We've got to destroy Trump to send a major message out to everybody of just how much his sort of ideology and his approach is repudiated. But also, we've got to help get Democrats, especially progressives elected to Congress, you know, the Bernie supporters elected to Congress, everybody on the left, and just really sort of take everything back. Um, okay, anyway, I'll give you one last view of Central Park, person sitting near me thinking I'm crazy. Um, and I'm going to go walk with Sasha. Sasha, one last look for the people. There you go. Okay. Oh, Sasha, here's a motorcycle. She's always defending me against motorcycles. All right, guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.